like to welcome you to uh, the exhibition. And my apologies for not being there in person. Um, it's lovely to be uh, the opportunity to be able to be with you in spirit. And I hope that you'll find something in the exhibition that's going to be of interest. In the meanwhile, Glenn's kindly allowed me the opportunity to put this on video. And that is the background to some of the works that you are looking at in the near future uh, are in fact um, based on experiences that I had in the Forest of Dean uh, many years ago when I was in fact at, at school. And as a result of uh, looking and walking for three miles to school and three miles back through the fringe of the forest, I had a very strong feeling about painting trees, obviously. And when I was first teaching in the college in, in Northern Ireland, um, I had my first exhibition, which was entirely trees. And later on in London, I had similar pictures. And uh, another critic uh, commented on them, said he didn't know whether they were ships with sails or, or trees, but he liked them anyway, which was good enough for me in my in my 20s. Uh, what, I, what I'm really getting around to is the fact that um, the background of all of this uh, contemporary work, uh, the um, uh, or, origins, were, were always with me from a child, really. Um, I painted landscape when I was a teenager in watercolours, and it was a sort of secret life for me to be bothered much about it. And then after after T Mark at 21 at the end of the war, when I went back to college, I got into terrible trouble with my tutors because I loved colour. And of course, in the 40s, uh, colour was pretty well unheard of. Um, college life was centred around life drawing, still life, and fear compositions, which uh, I found a bit boring, but I did them anyway because that was the important thing to get a degree and get a job. But I still mucked about with watercolours. I still had little shops at exhibitions. I showed them in London a bit. And um, eventually, and uh, I'm going to put a couple of them in this video in a moment, uh, and eventually uh, they became the basis of very recent work, which is the more abstract -y, expressionist uh, paintings of trees with with the water lilies. Um, so I have sort of revisited these themes over a long period. All of this is just background whilst I secretly painted landscapes, uh, impressionist, Expressionist. I tried them in many different ways, but in recent years, as in this exhibition, I've tried to bring the element of abstraction into the uh, designs of the painting while still maintaining 
the atmospheric emotion that's stirred me in the first place. When I was in British Grammar School, eight or nine years old, and ten, whatever, I used to roam about looking for uh, Roman relics in in, the, uh, in Somerset where we lived at the time. And uh, so I've always been in nature and associated with it. Um, and in the last 30 years, I've been able very thoughtfully to make a life. Uh, I've always been fascinated by the way trees can interlock in an avenue. The uh, French Impressionists, of course, use the, that device quite a bit. But in the forest, uh, in the Forest of Dean, which was my locale, uh, that was very much more dense. Some of the, some of the areas were, were ominous, very, very black, dense. Uh, there's another painting which is in this exhibition called Cathedral. And uh, the structure of many of the trees that I've done, either as Impressionist or Expressionist or even abstract, um, have that device of the looking through branches, looking through blackthorn, looking through, looking through, being outside of, and being conscious of the what was happening on the other side, a different world. And all of this is, has, has developed during my three years of isolation from Ireland and being in lockdown here in this very comfortable house with a bit of land and again many, many oak trees and trees all around us. And uh, uh, I've been able to resurrect old drawings and that brings back memories which stirs the emotional response which you see in this exhibition. had marvellous long holidays, three, three months in the summer. So my wife and I, we had a little old car and we toured the west of Ireland, all the way around the coast, right the way around from the north to the west to the south, back to the east. And the area we liked best was the west of Ireland. It was pretty empty uh, back in the 40s it was still quite primitive. One of the roads marked as a main road uh, on the map uh, had grass down the middle of it. And it was no problem at all to uh, find the odd cow or the donkeys uh, wandering about uh, and sheep, of course, at the side of the road. The walls weren't always very efficient. So you just never knew what you were going to meet. We met plenty of animals, but not very many people. And we camped, and I got to once again uh, understand that landscape as being very different to that which I had been uh, accustomed to as a child and as a young person. Um, and of course, uh, the bogland between um, uh, Clifton uh, in County Galway and Roundstone is 15, 20 square miles of absolutely nothing. An enormous sky, water on one side, crashing away the Atlantic, uh, and totally emptiness, except that 
the land was scarred, there were still elements of medieval strips, uh, separated fields stripped, separated by stones. The um, local inhabitants uh, had stone walls because they had to get the stone off the ground in the first place. And uh, that had a different otherworldly element which appealed to me. And I found there was one tree bent, uh, bent out of shape with an enormous uh, uh, nest on it. And that's featured in one of my paintings. And it was the only tree for about as far as you could see in all directions. Um, and it was an apology of a tree when you think of the giants that are in the Forest of Dean. But it was the otherworldliness, the um, uh, element of unseen forces, which immediately drew my attention, which again, although totally different visually, uh, gave me the same emotional reactions I got in the closed in forest of my youth. Uh, strange that such different icons would arouse similar emotions, but they did. And I've tried to paint the bog every year for the last 60 years until quite recently. And uh, I painted in all different ways, abstract, uh, where the shapes were dominant, impressionist, where the atmosphere was dominant, um, but all the time struggling to make the colour uh, resonate in a particularly, uh, I almost, you might I'd say, a musical form. Um, I work in the studio when I'm in the studio permanently with the um, the uh, music I like, Schubert, Beethoven, Mozart, and early in music, and um, it would be, it has been, I don't think I've ever achieved it, but still got a year or two left, and uh, I wanted to get the emotional reaction from a painting that I get from, uh, well, Beethoven or Super, which of course is totally impossible, but isn't that what dreams are for? Like all artists, I start with optimism and I finish with pessimism. Uh, nothing really works as it ought to, but you just, uh, sometimes one overworks a picture, sometimes one underworks it. And um, possibly the reason why I keep on trying a similar subject is to get the damn thing right eventually, but I haven't done that yet. And it's The, the awareness of Mother Earth, the, um, the loneliness, the, the, the battle of the elements, how these have survived and everything else is gone, and uh, the fortitude, fortitude of the human spirit. I, I think these would Mm. Uh, the, the technical answer to that would be these are a little more graphic, not as not as painterly, and they're they're also on a smaller scale. Whereas the the, the big um, the big uh, well that's very nicely done. Whereas the the big sky is a uh, I know that ladies say that size doesn't matter, but in my case, 
the size of this is incredibly important to the image. Um, it's interesting seeing it there, and I'm glad it's there, but you don't get anything of the same vibes until you're actually looking at the canvas. And, um, and that's where that one would differ from this. That, that's, that would be, that would, would be less forceful. Uh, um, I've had that there for, for quite a few years. And um, I kind of find I can still look at it. You know, um, a, lot of people, a lot of people buy pictures, including my own, of course, um, that, that they read, they read, they see it quickly. It's a topographical view, it's an like island or something or other. And uh, they say, well, that, that's jolly nice, I like that. So, you know, right. but they don't see it again. It's on the wall. I don't see it, um, and I want these ones, and these, even those old ones. So you, you 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 see it, and you know it, and then somehow there's something else that you haven't seen, and then there's something else. That, that's what's important to me. And that's why uh, I'm not I'm not content with academia anymore. That has faded into total in insignificance uh, with this thread that came with what you saw out there with the 1960s, with ones you see around the place, the 50s and 60s, um, which all lead up to the collection that you've got together of my more um, iconic work for me. But this, that goes a step further into, into where? It goes into, um, first of all, the ruggedness of those worn down mountains from the Ice Age the uh, sense of um, of eternity, I suppose. Um, the, the power of it. Uh, I'm with JFK. I need a bit of power. And, uh, and these can never have power. They can be uh, attractive or not, as case may be and they can be descriptive and they remind people of a jolly good holiday or all sorts of things but the group that you have here assembled um, they're not meant to please anybody they certainly didn't please me and I paid for damn things but they express for me, what landscape has been telling me for most of my life. Well, when I was younger, I didn't listen. And now um, I haven't got much else to do except listen. So I'm listening really hard. Again, going back to my childhood, which was in Gloucestershire, the borders of Wales, uh, of the forest, um, and I worked in the landscape. Um, I carried water in the landscape, and um, I just kept looking at things and then I that got me to get my watercolours out and um, uh, my mother was a watercolour artist in, in her day and um, and it, it sort of grew from there um, always always I've been looking for something 
which wasn't there. I felt the um, presence of something which wasn't there. And it was that that I wanted to paint. And um, uh, I'm afraid my solitude, the solitude of the artist, particularly of the landscape artist, is what I most desire. And I've been fortunate in that circumstances in the last 30, 40 years have led me to be able to indulge that, which is um, as much as anybody can ask on this earth. <laughs> You can see for miles in the bog, because it's absolutely flat. Like, like parts north of things are absolutely flat, a big arch of the sky and so on. And it's very, um, sometimes I find myself, um, the corner of my eye, I almost see something, and then I look, and of course it's, it's gone. That one, uh, that, that's, that's eternity to me, the, um, the sky which would have been there when the planet was formed and the, the emptiness, the wildness, the nothingness, but it's there, it's more than, and that's what I think about, that's what the bogs are good about, is that, um, for anybody else, they look at the bog and they think it's 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 just empty and wild. But when you start, thinking, oh, there's a favourite of mine, Shangri La. <laughs> that, that, that's a game. Um, yeah, there's the because of the prime primeval almost feel yeah. that they have. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Is man has no part of them. We are trespassing on we are trespassing on time. As opposed to trying to make the countryside <coughs> reveal its secret life which is where the latter pictures come in yes well um, this little group of uh, uh, this is my, my my beginnings of this here the saturated color instead of having pieces of very strong color which lots of other people have done um, i wanted to get a whole mass so that this hits you like that's going to hit you eventually when it's finished, which that can't. Um, and uh, so, uh, so this is the the shock of the car here, um, which isn't pure. It would be quite simple to make those shapes abstract and block them in. With, with nice gradations, which, which Hitchens does so well. But that's where the difference lies. So, so um, whilst those are pleasing to the eye and a bit sophisticated, that's got power. Mm. And Anything of mine that's any good, or could be good, or isn't too bad, more to the point. Power. But that's the power you feel in the landscape. Yeah, so it's not my power, it's the power of nature that I've been able to record. And I really don't think anybody, that I, I, not that I, I don't serve the neck, but my, my son does. 
but I don't know anybody that paints like that. That's, and that's my whole raison d'etre, if you like. This is where I'm happy and at home. And, I, and, and these, I know exactly what I'm doing. No problem. Those, I'm not too sure what I'm doing. But what I'm doing is grasping something that isn't there. I kind of don't map out anything. I don't have a plan for life. I get, I get tossed around by life. And um, in all these different periods, there's always a lot of good to use. Uh, I, I still have a lot of ideas that I want to... Uh, the one thing I find frustrating is that the head is still there and I'm and pictures completely go through my head on a regular basis um, but I physically find it difficult to have the energy well I'm very lucky to be in the middle of all this and, <laughs> <laughs> and being able just to paint my pictures I guess that's some um, the only thing I really, really, really miss is my horses. And that, that was a period of about 30 plus years, 40 years, um, when I, I was really alive, if you know what I mean. And uh, they were just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And again, one must be thankful for what one has. <laughs>